All praises to everybody out there, man. I hope you guys are all blessed. I hope you guys are all well. So the video that you guys are about to see, um, me and brother Josh, where we're doing our usual Discord q and A. If you guys want to ask a pastor certain questions, I highly recommend you guys, you know, come into our Discord q and A's. Link down below. We do those Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But um, one of you guys, one of you subscribers, little Ziggy, uh, his father was a pastor, is a pastor, Pastor Vaughn. And after he saw me give my life to Christ, he wanted his father to reach out to me. Even before I gave my life to Christ, he wanted his father to reach out to me to try to get me to come to their church. And uh, Pastor Vaughn, he had joined the Discord. And after you guys see all the footage, you guys will kind of get the story from there. But uh, shout out to Space City Church. Uh, I'll leave their information right here. If you guys want to go visit there one day or, you know, help them out. But, um, yeah, I got to give my testimony. All praises to God. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Peace. Here All praises. Are. What's good, my brother? How you doing? Hey, well, hey when I'm at the Parallel Football Games, people be like, you look like Gideon. I'm, everybody be saying I look like Gideon, man. I'm tired of being people saying I look like Gideon. <laughs> I've been praying for you, brother. Thank you so much, you. brother. Thank you. Thank you. I was praying for you before you made the change. I've gone on your Instagram and invited you out to youth events because my kids, show my kids. Let me show you my kids. This is, this. this What's is up, y'all? They keep talking to me about this brother named Gideon. I've been watching your videos. I said, man, if this dude ever catches fire for Jesus, he's going to change some lives. Lead into the kingdom this Sunday. If you got time. To stop by our congregation, we'd love to have you, brother. Jimmy. Brother, I, I got nothing but time, bro. Um, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add you right now. He and, do uh, look like you, Gideon, though, for real, though, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Did I warm it up for you? Hey, man, let's show some honor in this house. Stand to your feet for the man of God. Y'all give it up for brother Gideon one time, man. Appreciate you. If you need me, just whistle. How you guys doing today? I'm not gonna entertain you guys like Pastor Vaughn, you know. I, I can't talk like that, but um, uh, I wanna give a huge shout out to um, Pastor Vaughn, and especially his son, for, you know, reaching out to me. Uh, for you guys that don't know who I am, uh, my name is Jadon, but my YouTube name is Jadeon. Uh, I make content, I was making prank videos, uh, across all my social media platforms, I have over 20 million followers. You know, I, I made my living uh, doing content. You know, I'm 22 years old. Uh, all praises to God. I just purchased my first home where I 100% own it. And, you know, I'm able to take care of my family. But uh, my spirit was just always calling me to come back to Christ. And I grew up in a church home. Uh, with my two parents, uh, you know, I grew up in the church. But once, you know, I was able to get on my own feet and do my own thing, I chased after my own heart. And in uh, Jeremiah, it tells you how the heart is naturally wicked in Jeremiah 17. And then in Proverbs, Solomon was telling us to not lean on our own understanding. Because, you know, in our minds, we can always make an excuse for something. In our minds, we can always make something that is bad not seem that bad. And that's what I would always do, you know? I would always psych myself out and tell myself, oh, I'll be okay doing this or I'll be okay doing that. And the more and more success I got, the more and more empty I felt where, you know, I could post a video and in a week it gets 10 million views and, you know, making what a person makes in an entire year off of one video, but, my soul just felt empty, and that's a, that's a horrible feeling because when you don't have something, you at least know what you need to get. But when you have everything and you still don't have something inside of you, that's the... <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a feeling I can't even describe. And um, in the end of Ecclesiastes, I always hearken back to this. Where, you know, Solomon, he was the wisest man in the land. He had the most successful kingdom. And when he went off and ventured into things that weren't aligned with God, you know, the kingdom got split in half. You know, everything went down. And at the end of Ecclesiastes, he said, this is the matter of the whole thing. 
to love God and follow God and keep his commands. And um, when I started looking at myself and how I was back then, I realized what that hole was is that I didn't have God in me. I wasn't choosing God in my life. Uh, in Revelation 3, it shows how Jesus knocks at the door. But he's a gentleman. He doesn't just open it. He doesn't force you to worship him. He doesn't barge in. He knocks and he waits. But the more you ignore that knock, like any true gentleman, the knock's going to get quieter and quieter and quieter. But the thing about God, our loving God, is he's always going to still be out there for us. And, you know, I just give all praises to the Most High that he waited for me. And um, I, was, I was coming back from Huntsville with my girlfriend, and we were driving in this Uber. And the whole Uber ride, the lady didn't talk to us. We just was driving, and it was an hour and 30 minute drive. When we get back to my house, out of nowhere, the Uber driver didn't want to just talk to us. <laughs> so she asked us, she said, do you guys believe in Jesus? And of course, I was like, yeah, of course. And then she asked me another question, she said, if you were to die right now, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? And I just had to be honest with myself, you know? It's like, you can know Jesus, but do you have Jesus? Because in James, it tells us how even the demons know Jesus and they tremble at his name. So if even the, uh, even the demons know Jesus, that just lets you know that knowing him isn't just enough. You have to have him. You have to partake in him. And I wasn't partaking in him. And I was just honest with myself. And I said, I will go to hell. And that conversation just lingered in my head, like just a replay, just playing over and over and over again. And I just was really just looking at all the stuff I had and I made a pros and cons list in my head. And I was like, if I give my life over to Christ, the cons would be, I wanna get as many views because I wanna be able to do certain things. If I give my life over to Christ, I'm not gonna, hang, I'm not gonna be able to hang around certain people that I was hanging around because that doesn't align with Christ. And the con list, was just going all the way down where <laughs> it was just, you know, you make a decision on anything. If your con list outweighs your pro list by a lot, you're going to go with the cons. Like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to do that. But then I went over to the pro side, and it was easy. I would have everlasting life with the Father. Like, and just that one thing, having it on the pro side, I just felt the conviction in my heart to just, you know what, I gotta give this all up. And so I went on stream and I wasn't gonna even say anything about my journey. I was just gonna go on there and I was like, you know what, I don't wanna be a hypocrite or nothing. And then like, you know, this stream, I'm good. But then, you know, maybe two or three down the line, I'm acting up and people are like, well, what about that first stream? So I was just on there chilling, chilling. And just out of nowhere, I just had a conviction in my heart because when you really have Jesus in you, you just can't help but spread it. So I gave my um, I gave my testimony on stream, and right after I got done talking, I knew that I was born again. I knew that my old life was gone. I knew there's no going back, and I really feel as though I had the Holy Spirit in me because you know, to just kind of throw everything away in front of millions of people because it was circulating all over the internet where, you know, people are saying, Gideon's giving his life over to Christ. And then, you know, I'm going on different forums, seeing what people are saying. And, you know, I'm seeing people saying, oh, he's crazy. Oh, he's going through a mental episode, da, 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 da. da. And then, I'm looking at it, and this is my own Reddit. This is a r slash Jadeon Reddit. So these are supposed to be my biggest fans, supposedly. But everybody's in there saying, oh, he's crazy. Oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. Da-da-da-da-da. Oh, Jadeon, I hope you get some help mentally. 
And, <laughs> you know, that's a crazy thing to tell somebody that's trying to give their life over to Jesus, and you're telling them to go get a mental evaluation. And I was really thinking to myself, I was like, man, did I make the wrong decision? Like, is this wrong? But then in the scriptures, Christ said, the world loves its own. So the reason they loved me was because I was with them. Your friends are going to love you. If your friends do drugs and you're doing drugs with them, they're going to love you. But the moment you're like, man, I want to put the pills down. I want to put the weed down. I want to put the needles down. You're not them anymore. The Bible says, can two not walk together on the same accord? You have to be on the same accord to walk with somebody. That's why everybody is in here today, because you all have your walk with Jesus. Jesus also said, you know, the world hated me first, so what are they going to do about you? If no, It also says that the servant isn't better than the master. We're all Jesus' servants. We're all slaves for Christ. So if they hated Christ, why wouldn't they hate us? And it really, that, those verses really touched my heart to where it made me know I was making the right decision even more. So now about a week into my testimony after doing this, um, you know, I'm moving different, I'm talking different, and then I'm seeing the earthly things I built start coming down where views start going down. People that would usually hit me up all the time, calls are getting fewer and fewer. And it's, it's a hard thing when you're withdrawing yourself from something. It's like, you know, it's like withdrawals. When you get off alcohol, you get off drugs, you get that itch to go back. But I just always remember God. God. I remember the pro side of my list, Everlasting Life. And we just have to realize, especially my youngins out there, man, you know, I know you guys are young and you guys have the rest of your life ahead of you. But then also on the other hand of that, you don't know when God's going to call you home. You know, nobody is guaranteed tomorrow. And I feel that that's the one thing in life that we always feel like we're guaranteed is tomorrow. Because that's the thing we always get. Every time we wake up, we get a new tomorrow. You know, sometimes one thing might not happen for us, but we always get another tomorrow. And so we always assume, oh, yeah, I'm always going to be here. I'm always going to be here. But that's not the case. And so you have to live your life like it's your last. But living your life like it's your last isn't doing what your earthly flesh wants, getting everything off your checklist. Oh, let me get this done, this done, this done, then I'm going to serve Christ. No, living your life like it's your last is you know that you're going to be going home to Christ tomorrow, but you're living your life according to what he's established out for us, according to the gospel. And so for all my youngins out there, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like when you follow Christ, it's not going to be the popular thing. It's really not. You're not going to get any brownie points from anybody. You know, you're not going to have the cool kids hit you up. None of that. But the Bible says that we're a peculiar people. The saints are peculiar people. Peculiar means strange, different, set apart. A person should be able to see that's a Christian right there without even having to know who you are or to know anything about you or what your name is. They could just see a light shine from you. And so and you also got to think about it. That light shining off of you is going to shine on something else. So something that's in the dark is going to get light up. So... You might not know it by following Jesus. You're helping somebody else and you don't even know. You know, either some of us are planters of seeds. Pastor Vaughn, he's a waterer of the uh, seeds. But God gives the increase. So you never know what your life is going to entail. So you have to live it according to Jesus. My main thing is I have this platform and I was able to post any and every video I ever wanted promoting anything. But now that I'm promoting Jesus, it's a problem with people. And so, but now for the first time ever in my YouTube career, I really feel like the content that I'm posting now isn't for people, it's for God. It's for God.
I appreciate you guys for having me. Uh, huge shout out for Pastor Vaughn. And I need that song after uh, service, man. It was fire. I loved it, y'all. But uh, thank you. Thank you. That boy full of that word, huh? If you 21 and under, I need y'all to come down to the altar right now. 21 and under. 21 and under. I believe even though you felt like you were in the world drawing those people, I think it was your anointing that was drawing the people in. I believe that. I believe that. First time I saw you, I said there's something special about you, man. And when my kids told me that you lived in, in the area, I was always pursuing getting to you. Amen. And then when they told me that you gave your life to God, it was a, it was a joy in my spirit. And I just want you to know I believe in you, bro. Amen. I believe in you. That's why you're up here. And don't worry about what anybody else is saying, amen? Because you're going to come across a bunch of Christians like these that are the real deal, amen? That are going to support you, that are going to lift you up. And, bro, we, you're going to be able to reach people that, that I will never believe I can reach. So how not, why not offer an opportunity of our platform for you this morning? But young people, understand this. Y'all can hear it from an old fogey like me. I can say it a hundred times and you won't believe me. But like you said, here's a young man that's 20. All y'all are 21 years old and younger. Amen? He's seen everything. He's been around everybody. He's had every opportunity. He's had the money he has, and he has these things. But even in the midst of having all the things that you think you want, what did he want? What did he want? I want to hear that child's mouth. What did he want? He wanted Jesus. Somebody this morning needs to make a real decision today. Somebody this morning needs to make a real decision and say, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to be set apart and I'm going to be different for my junior high, for my middle school, for my high school, for my college. God, he came here today for somebody. I don't know who it is. I don't know which one of y'all it is. But he came here today for somebody. You're doing a great job. I'm proud of you. You don't even know me, but I'm proud of you. Amen. Uh, you got a pastor in your life that's working with you and discipling you. You did the right thing. A lot of people don't have a covering. They don't even have the humility to say that they have a pastor, that they're submitted to somebody. So you're already light years ahead. You have a pastor in your life that's discipling you and pushing you. He's teaching you right. You came up here and spit about 30 scriptures up here. Y'all hear all that word was in that boy's mouth? You heard all that word in that boy's mouth? He had no notes. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. Amen. Oh, you on your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You on your way. Yo, I'm, I'm honored to, to, to know you. They say, can I call you friend? Ah, we friends. We friends. Amen. That's my friend. My friend Gideon. Amen. Stretch your hands towards this man of God, everybody. Stretch your hands towards him. God, I thank you right now. God, we thank you for Brother Josh, for his pastor. Uh, that's just been taking time to spend with him and fellowship with him and to pour into him. God, we thank you for his parents. Uh, I heard that part. Uh, he said he, he grew up in a church home. Ah, uh, That means he was raised up right. The Bible says you raise up a child in the way they should go, and they will not depart from it as they get older. God, we thank you for that uh, a word coming into fruition into his life right now. Bless his parents right now, God, just for the, what they've done, who they've raised up, for the anointing that's on his life. God, we ask his anointing that continues to grow. We thank you that he continues to keep blinders on, to focus on the people that are focusing on him, God, to focus on the people that are pouring into him, to focus on the people that believe in him. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Ah, I like this part of that scripture. It says, And every word that rises up against you shall get cast down. No weapon formed against you, Gideon, shall prosper. And every word that rises up, every voice that rises up against you, the Bible says, shall get cast down. Ah, claim that right now. God, we thank you for Galatians 6, 9, anointing on his life right now. Do not grow weary in well-doing. For if you faint not, if you, don't go, if you don't give up, if you don't lose heart, you will reap a harvest in due season. That means in God's time. And wait on God, Brother Gideon. Let him use you. Amen. We thank you for his anointing. We thank you for all that you have for him, Father. And we thank you that he was humble enough to come and bless us today as Faith City Church. God, continue to bless his life and cover him, protect him. His coming and his going. Him and his girlfriend, his future wife, in the name of Jesus. She liked that part. Amen. God bless you.